everybody. Welcome to City Kids at Home. We're your hosts, Daisy. And I'm Gabby. And today we have such a cool episode for we you. Do. Because we're actually starting a brand new series. Oh my gosh. And it's called Psalms, Proverbs, and Parables. Mm -hmm. And for the next three weeks, we're actually going to be talking all about the Psalms. Mm -hmm. And Psalm is a book of the Bible. And it's actually the biggest book of the Bible. Wow. And it's written by many, many authors. That's right. And today our big idea is, are you ready for it? I'm so ready. Let's say it together. OK. OK, in one, two, three. Enter his gates. Awesome. And that brings us to our big word. And our big word is found in Psalms 111, verse 10. Yep. Would you like to say it all together? Let's do it. OK, so we're going to practice first, but we need you guys to stand up. And Gabby, are you ready? I'm ready. OK, I think you guys are too. I just need you to repeat after me. Fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the foundation. Is the foundation of true wisdom. Of true wisdom. And all who obey his commandments. And all who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. Will grow in wisdom. And praise him forever. And praise him forever. Awesome! Fantastic! Good job. Let's do it all together. Let's do it. Okay. One, two, three. Fear, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. wisdom. And all who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom and praise him forever. Amazing! Wow. Good job! So good. <laughs> and now we're going to hear some of our City Kids values. Yes. So let's hear them. Listening ears. I will listen twice as much as I speak. Kind of. I will use kind words to honor others and speak life. Helping hands. I will use my hand for helping and share. Humble heart. I will think of others before myself. Positive attitude. Always choose joy. Hey guys, it's Daisy here. Before we get into worship, we're going to prepare a couple of things. We're going to prepare our bodies and our hearts. But before preparing our hearts, we're going to get warmed up with our bodies. So if you guys can get up and sit up and stand up with me, we're about to get started. Good job. OK, so today we've got a couple of stretches and warm ups. They're going to get us you know, working it, feeling it. It's going to be good. So if you guys can grab your hand like this right in front of you and just pull it a little bit. Not too hard. We don't want to hurt ourselves. Awesome. Switch sides. And then the other way. It's like an upside down high. <laughs> good job. OK. You can just stretch your arms out, shake them out a little bit. Awesome. Okay, the next one we're going to do is jumping jacks. Have you guys ever done that before? Okay, so we're going to go and we're going to do, hmm, should we do 100, 50? Ah, let's just do 10. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great job. Whew, I feel that one. Awesome, okay, so the last one we're gonna do, we're gonna need our legs, okay? So you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't hit your brother, you don't hit your sister, you don't hit your friend, okay? And we're just gonna go stretching like this, and you can go as high as you want. It doesn't have to be up here, and it can be here. It doesn't matter, as long as you guys are just getting those legs moving. We're gonna do 100? No, I'm joking, <laughs> we're gonna do 10, okay? One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my gosh, good job, guys. Okay, I think we're warm. And the next thing we're gonna do is prepare our hearts. So if you guys can bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that you are my God. I thank you that I get to worship you with all of my heart and with all of my strength. Jesus, today I decide to live for you and I decide to worship you and sing songs for you. I love you, God, and I thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome, guys. Let's get into worship. Hit it. The one 
one called Savior. Have you heard of His perfect love? Have you heard of the one in heaven? Have you heard how He gave His Son? Cause I have found this love. I believe in the Son. Show me. Holding on to you, holding on. 
And I know you will never fail I want all of you, you'll never change Your love won't let me down Love won't let me Wow, what a super cool time of praise and worship. Amazing. And who remembers what book of the Bible that we're actually talking about today? It is the book of Psalms. It is. And there are books on almost any subject you can ever imagine. Books give you wisdom and help you understand all sorts of things. Name a topic and somebody has probably already written a book about it. That's right. But the Bible is the best book in the whole universe. Mm -hmm. It gives us wisdom for life. Yes. And the Bible might seem like just a big book, but it's actually made up of 66 books. Each of these books are different and written by different authors to all kinds of people for all unique reasons. That's right. The books of Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon, and Job are actually known as wisdom books. Exactly. And you may think that the book of Psalms is just a bunch of poems and songs, but there's a lot more to Psalms than meets the eye. That's right. And out of all of the books in the Bible, Psalms is the longest book by far. Yep. It's actually the only book that was written by many authors. It contains both the longest chapter and the shortest chapter of the Bible. And that's true. And the book of Psalms teaches us to focus on God instead of ourselves. It teaches us to praise God and worship Him both on our own and together. <laughs> That's right. Many of the Psalms were actually written by a man named David. Remember, he's the guy that actually defeated the giant Goliath with some stones and a slingshot mm -hmm. when he was just a boy, right? Yeah. And then when he got older, he actually became king of Israel. Wow. Now, let's hear a story about him. King David had a heart that loved God and was thankful. One day, he had an idea to build a temple that could be a home for God's presence and a place of worship. So he went to the prophet Nathan, someone that heard messages from God and told him his great idea. That night, God spoke a message to Nathan. God said it wasn't time for his house to be built yet and that one day he would help David's son to build the temple. So Nathan went and told King David what God had said. And even though the king really wanted to build God's house himself, he didn't have a bad attitude. He realized that God's plan was always better than his. So instead, he rejoiced and praised God with a thankful heart. Wow, David, a shepherd boy, became king. He had the right attitude and he had a thankful heart. He obeyed God and God blessed him. That's right. And the book of Psalms actually gives us wisdom for life. King David, he had a thankful heart. Mm -hmm. Just listen to what he says in Psalms 9 verses 1 to 2. He says this, All my heart says thank you to the Lord. I will tell people about all of the great things you have done. I will be very happy because of you. I will sing to praise your name, Most High God. That's so beautiful. Do you guys remember what our big idea of the day was? That's right, enter his gates. And we must do that with thanksgiving. It means we should praise God with a thankful heart. So true, and that actually leads us to our first key. <gasps> Lots, Lots of wisdom. wisdom! The book of Psalms teaches us to focus on God instead of ourselves. It teaches us to praise and worship God both on our own and together with our friends. Yeah, and Psalms is filled with tons of songs. Songs can make you feel all sorts of ways. And when you listen to happy songs, it can make you feel happy. And just like sad songs can sometimes make you feel sad. King David wrote most of the Psalms and he for sure had some ups and downs. Mm -hmm. David also had some amazing victories, and it's clear from the Psalms that he loved to worship God and give Him praise. Yes, and no matter how we are feeling, if we are winning or losing, if we are sad or excited, if we're angry or not, there is a Psalm that can help us. That's right, and look at what it says in Psalm 100 verses 1 and 2. It says this, Everyone on earth, shout to the Lord. Do something for the Lord to show Him that you are happy. Come to Him with songs of joy. That's such an awesome verse. And the book of Psalms teaches us to be thankful and worship God no matter what we're going through. It gives us lots of wisdom. That's right. And our second key is attitude of gratitude. We have lots to be thankful for. 
I'm thankful for my family and my friends. I'm thankful for my church and my pastors and my teachers and leaders. And I'm thankful for sunshine and picnics and my dog and Hawaiian pizza <laughs> and even sleeping in on Saturdays. That's amazing. There's just so much to be thankful for. Everywhere we look, there are great things, great places and great people all happening. God is so good. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I struggle with being thankful. I do too. Like I grumble and complain at the most silly things. Yeah. Like if it's raining and I really wanted to go to the beach or if I wanted to play a game on my iPad, but it's at like 1%. Oh yeah. But when we focus on those things that we don't have, instead of focusing on what we do have, we lose perspective and miss out on enjoying the things that we can be thankful for. Yeah, that's right. And did you guys know that having an attitude of gratitude is scientifically proven to be better for you? Mm -hmm. Now let's hear from Bilbo, the science bro, to tell us more about this fun fact. Whoa, ahoy, city kids! Is me, Bilbo, the science bro. And today, I have a cool experiment for you. Yes, I do. I know that today you guys are talking about gratitude, okay? So I'm gonna show you an experiment that shows what our life is like with gratitude and when we have a bad attitude. We don't want a bad attitude, no we don't. So this is our lives when we have a good attitude, when we have gratitude. It's a nice, refreshing drink. Mmm. <laughs> so, so good, right? Delicious. But when we have a bad attitude, it's a little bit different than that, okay? I'm gonna show you here. I have a Coke here, right? Just like the other one. But our bad attitude is something like these little Mentos. It could be something very, very small. And when we put the bad attitude in our lives, look at what happens. That's not good. We don't want that to happen to us. It just exploded all over the place. Is that what you want your life to be like? Of course not. We want our lives to be like the nice, delicious Coke, not the bad one. So city kids, make sure we always have an attitude of gratitude. Catch you next time. This is Bilbo the Science Bro. Wow, that was so amazing. Thanks so much, Bilbo. <laughs> when we have an attitude of gratitude, we're healthier, we sleep better, we're more relaxed, and we live with more energy. That's so true. The Psalms reminds us to be thankful. I want to live a life that's full of thanksgiving and keeping an attitude of gratitude. Me too. And our third and last key is a king with a thankful heart. King David had reasons to grumble and complain Life didn't always go his way, but he was always a king with a thankful heart. That's so true. King David was thankful for God's protection. Just mm -hmm. look at what he says in Psalms 18 verses 2 to 3. He says this, The Lord keeps me safe. He is my great rock and my strong place. God is my high rock. I run to him to hide and be safe. He keeps me safe like a soldier's shield. He is the strong place where I can hide safely. I praise the Lord because He deserves it. When I called to Him for help, He saved me from my enemies. Wow. David was also thankful for God's creation. Let's see what it says in Psalms 8. It says this, Lord, our ruler, your name is famous all over the world. The skies above show how great you are. You have taught children and babies to praise you. You do that to show your enemies how strong you are and anyone who turns against you has to be quiet. Your cruel enemies can do nothing. You made the skies with your own hands, and when I look up, I see the moon and the stars. You have put them all in their right place. Lord, our ruler, your name is famous all over the world. Wow, King David was thankful for God to just about everything. Mm -hmm. This shepherd boy who had become king has the right attitude. Yes. Look at what he says in Psalms 100 verse four. He says this, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. That's awesome. We can learn so much from King David and from the book of Psalms. It gives us wisdom for life. 
praise God with a thankful heart. That's so right. Our episode is coming to an end, but let's do some trivia. Let's do it. So our first question is, what was the big idea of the day? Was it enter his gates, wisdom is cool, or the book of Psalms? It was enter his gates. Mm -hmm. And we've learned so much about this today. We must enter his gates or the presence of God with thanksgiving. Exactly. That brings us to our second question. How can we have a thankful heart? Is it focusing on what we have, having an attitude of gratitude, or singing songs? That's right, it's all three. Guys, God loves when we come to Him with a thankful heart. And instead of focusing on the bad things, we focus on what we do have with Him, having an attitude of gratitude. And we can do that in so many ways. And one of them is even singing songs. That's so true. And our third and last question is, what's a fun fact about the book of Psalms? Is it the longest book of the Bible, written by one person, or does it teach us to have a bad attitude? Whoa. Hmm. Hmm. The correct answer is longest book of the Bible. Mm -hmm. The book of Psalms has actually 150 chapters. Wow. <laughs> it actually has the longest chapter of the Bible and the shortest. That is so, so true. Guys, our episode's coming to an end, but let's pray before we go. Let's do it. All right, hands like this, just bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that I can come to you. That I can come to you with a thankful heart. With a thankful heart and an attitude of gratitude. And an attitude of gratitude. Lord, Lord, would you help me? Would you help me be more thankful? Be more thankful every single day. Every single day, just like King David. Just like King David. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. And again, we thank you. And again, we thank you. In your name, we pray. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Wow. Well, City Kids, we've had so much fun with you today. And don't forget to share this episode with all of your friends. Yes. And also check out the description below for some fun at-home activities and discussions. We're so thankful for today. We hope to see you guys next week. We love you, city kids. Bye. Bye. Before our episode ends, we want to give you the opportunity to make the decision to accept Jesus. It's the most important decision there is. You see, we all have a problem, sin. Romans says that all have sinned. And it's actually more than just doing bad things. It's something that we were born with and it separates us from God. Sin has a terrible consequence, death. And that's why we need a savior, Jesus. God the Father sent him to earth to save us. And he lived a perfect life and had no sin. He became the perfect sacrifice to save us. Jesus died on a cross for us because he loves us so much and didn't want us to be separated anymore. But after three days, he came back to life. Jesus is alive, and that means we can choose to be alive in him. Romans 10 verse nine says this, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, all we have to do is believe in him and invite him to come into our hearts. Maybe you're a part of our city kids, or maybe you're just a parent tuning in with us. You see, it doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. Jesus loves you. And if you would like to make this very important decision today, I wanna to invite you just to pray this little prayer with me. All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. Thank you that you died for us and that you came back to life. Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I wanna be alive in you. I ask you to come into my heart, be the Lord of my life. I love you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. And if you prayed this prayer for the first time today, I wanna to congratulate you. It says in the Bible that all of heaven is rejoicing in this moment and we're rejoicing with you. And also I wanna remind you that if you did pray this prayer for the very first time, make sure to tell someone, maybe tell a parent or a friend or someone important so that they can take some next steps with you. Well, City Kids, we love you so much and we'll see you next week.